So while in the West, all of us, including myself, were being shocked at the BCS Finals results of Daniel Herrera actually winning with blasters, on the other side of the game, just the day before, was the Japanese Finals of WGP 2017, in which all the qualified players throughout the year actually fought. And the result of which was just as surprising, if not more, in which the legendary fighter Haripin actually took Token Rambu Hanamaru to the first place and then the next day in WGP finals he actually got second with it. So for those of you that don't know, in October Japan got another token Rambu set that we don't have in English which is the Hanamaru special set in which there are two special decks uh, and they come with a bunch of supplies and these are two decks with play sets of everything. So you buy these two and you have everything. That's right, there's no booster packs, nothing. You get everything in one go and the majority of the deck that Haripin played to get first place in all of Japan actually only consisted of cards from these two sets. So in this video we're gonna go over why this deck works and why it's actually so strong. I was actually taught by my friend Melly who essentially just destroyed me with the deck uh, upon asking her and so I managed to see what the deck is actually capable of in you know first hand and now I want to relay this to you folks as well. Honestly, it's hard to even find a place to start, but for now we're going to go over some of the main deck cards. And the main grade 3 of the deck is actually Shoku Daikiri. And so he has two skills, first one of which is when you stride over him, you count as one to soul charge one and call a Hanamaru from your top three cards of the deck, and it gets plus 2k on top of that. So that's basically a gurgwit like skill that also gives you a soul charge, which is really nice. And on top of that, he does have a Vanguard and Rearguard Circle skill that when he attacks, if you have at least one Hanamaru face-up card, in your G zone, he gets plus 5k into that battle, making him basically always a 16k beat stick. So that's just to give you an idea of the kind of engine that you're running in order to always be able to, you know, just spawn a lot of cards on the field without much effort, but it doesn't end there. You don't have to even wait until grade 3 to start generating advantage because you have cards like the grade 2 Izumi no Kami and the grade 1 Horikawa who actually work in tandem. So Izumi no Kami has a skill that when he's cold you look at the top 4 cards and you reveal up to 1 grade 1 Hanamaru and then you may count almost 1 to call it and then shuffle your deck. The timing of the cost is actually really important because if you don't find anything, you don't actually have to pay the Cannon Blast, that's a really nice thing. And then he also works in tandem with the Grade 1, as we mentioned, who, when he's placed, looks at the top 4 cards of your deck, and then calls up to one Grade 2 card with Hanamaru in his name, and shuffles the deck, and then if you do call one, you have to choose a card from your hand into your soul, but it says in bracket that if you don't have any cards in your hand, you don't have to put anything into the soul, which is really nice. So what you can essentially do if you have like 2 Cannon Blast open on turn 2, is write into any other Grade 2, call yourself an Uzi Izumi no Kami, look at top 4, if you get a Horikawa, you call him, you look at top 4, you can call another Izumi no Kami, and then again, use an, that Izumi no Kami to call another grade 1, and you just got a full field from one card on turn 2. This, not many decks can do this in the current meta, this, this isn't GB restricted, this can be done on turn 2. And the random advantage engine doesn't stop there, there's also Yagen, the grade 2, who when he's called or ridden, you can count as 1 and choose a grade 1 or less Toshiro or Gokotai from your drop zone and call to rearguard circle. So two targets that Haripin ran in his deck include this Honebami grade, grade 1, as well as the Perfect Guard, who both suit that condition. So their skills doesn't don't matter as much right now, but they're just both good targets because Honebami himself is a 7k booster, so you can make 16k columns easily. So you can actually go into Izumi no Kami, and then go into Horikawa, and then follow it up you can go into a Yagen and then activate Yagen skill to count as one and call, let's say like you guarded the last turn with a Honebami and now you, again you have a full field and the uh, actual the latter case doesn't depend on RNG as much so you got yourself two 16k columns just like that without really doing much and like anything special so it really goes to show just how much early aggression the deck has as well. On top of that it has a fairly ridiculous starter which is Maeda who, when an attack hits with the Vanguard where it boosted, you can put him into your soul to search for one card with Ichigo Hitofuri in its name, reveal it and put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. And the one that you're going to be searching is a card that Haripin ran as a one of because his actual skill isn't that good, but he is a grade 3 Ichigo Hitofuri Hanamaru. What other deck has this? This is Wingo Brave. This is actually Wingo Brave and that's it. You essentially just 
this this works like Wingle Brave. You're not actually going to write into the Ichigo Hitofuri unless you really have to, but you essentially just secured a stride fodder for yourself immediately. And after you use that first stride fodder for the first time, you don't really have to care about stride fodders anymore after that because you're running 12 crits with 8 of those crits having the skill that you can use them as a grade 3 for stride if you have a face up card in your G zone, as long as you're striding into a Hanamaru, which basically all of your G units are. So this is insane. Eight of your triggers are stride fodders. That's actually crazy. And so that just makes it even more amazing. And therefore you don't really need like, like had it been run one of the normal stride fodders, but honestly, I think you could even get away without it because you have a searchable stride fodder if you just hit on essentially turn one in the same way that Wingo Brave has the same pressure. On top of that, the other crit is the old Shokodai Kiri Mitsutada, in which when your Vanguard attacks, you can slide him into the soul of his standing and then draw yourself a card and give two units plus 3k, making your columns even nicer. And this again is not GB restricted or even name restricted, which is really, really nice. Now getting into the G zone, there are some interesting cards that we have in here as well. There's some one ofs that Haripin ran, including Kogitsune Maru, who essentially soul blasts one and flips a G unit face up to look at the top three, puts one into hand and the other rest on top and bottom, one each. So that's definitely very nice because it essentially lets you stack a card so it can potentially be one of your triggers while also gaining your card in hand and accelerating your face-up G units. So it's overall a fairly nice first stride while we're at it. Then there's Tarotachi who essentially when he attacks for no costs searches for a Jirotachi Hanamaru calls it to Rear Circle and shuffles the deck. With that Jirotachi having the skill that when it attacks a Vanguard, it gets plus 5k until the end of that battle for each face up Tarotachi Hanamaru on your Vanguard Circle or G Zone, and if there's no face up cards in your damage zone, you kind of charge one. That's basically like a Quetzal Kotal from Zodiac Time Beast, so you could actually go into that stride when you have no face up damage and then. Both get a, at least a 16k attack out, plus also get yourself a counter charge. The other stride that was run at a low count is Tsurumaru, and his once per turn Soul Blast 1 Persona Flip skill lets you give one of your rear guards plus 10k in line of turn for each face up card in your G zone. So that's where that flipping of the G units actually comes in handy, because you can just give one of your rears this like massive power boost, and it's suddenly looking really, really scary. So it's overall just a very pressure stride, so when you can read that your opponent is not have any more perfect cards left, then you can easily swing at them with this. However, the two four ofs of the G zone include Nihongo, who has the uh, Shinken Hisat skill, which is basically limit break three, once per turn, Kamas one, Soul Blast one, and Persona flip, and then he gets plus 10k, and for that battle, your opponent can't call grade one or greater cards from hand to guardian circle. Therefore, that basically locks all your opponent's perfect guards, but lets them still guard with grade zeros and G guards. So it's still very scary because you can do this twice, and the cost isn't exactly that high either. So by just reading your opponent's hand, it's actually going to reward you for just playing smart. And then in my opinion, the most threatening stride is actually Hotarumaru, who has the once per turn Soul Blast 1 Persona Flip skill when it attacks. If the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is two or more, you pay the cost, and if you do, you still stand him, rest all of your rearguards, and he gets plus 5k and drive minus 1 until end of turn. Now, the timing on this is really important because when he stands, you have to rest all your rearguards, but it doesn't state that they have to be rested for the skill, so you can actually attack with everything before you attack with him, and then he will rest like he would just rest nothing because it just says rest all if there's nothing nothing to rest and that means nothing will be rested and thus he gets plus 5k and drive minus one so he's essentially a victal plasma for soul blast one that just has to be the third attack but that's actually really nice because also he does stand in the middle of his attack but he will finish that first attack before going into the next one so this is be gonna be just like 31k for two swings and that is just really, really scary. And so Haripin runs this one as a four of, and it definitely makes sense. And to pair it up, there's actually a grade one in the deck that Haripin runs at a total of three count, which has the skill that when you grade four Vang with Hanamaru in card name attacks, you can count on last one. If you do, you stand him and he gets plus four cans on that turn. So this is a Shinken Hisats or Limbrick three skill, but that pairs up really nicely because you can actually activate it twice. So it's really, really nice because he becomes an 11k attacker on his own or 11k booster you can you know turn columns out of him you can even make it two of them to be 22 you know whichever works but it's essentially paired up with that skill that actually works out super nicely 
The last card from the Hanamaru G unit is actually the G guard, which is Akashi, which is the three count G guard in his deck. The only other one is the one that minuses the, oppo the opponent's unit's power, uh, but this one gains plus 5k shield until end of that battle for each face down card in your damage zone. So for as much as you've counter blasted, you gain damage plus 5k shield, but if all cards are face down, you counter charge one, but it says in brackets, even if you counter charge, this card's shield will not reduce, which is a really nice thing to have because it actually makes sense because you gain the shield first before you actually resolve the rest of the effect. Therefore, it makes sense for the shield to not reduce as well. And that's just one of the ways to control damage and like counter charges and stuff in the deck as well because the perfect guard doesn't even need itself in the drop zone because after you guard with it, if you have at least four Hanamaru rear guards, you counter charge one and soul charge one and that's it. You don't even have to have a copy in the drop zone or anything. It just activates on its own just like that. And honestly, like with all these skills going about, I am not surprised that Haripin was able to take it to the tops at WGP Japan. So this was my little breakdown of the Token Ranbu Hanamaru deck. I know that the Hanamaru cards are not out in English and we don't know when they will actually be coming because of various licensing issues with the series and the anime and the games and whatnot as well. But I think the sets should eventually come out in English. So when they do, I hope that you people do that actually want to play Token Ranbu look back at this video just to see uh, any tips on how to build a deck and for the actual deck build that Haripin used to win WGP Japan I uh, will actually put a link in the description to the uh, official website in which you will see the entire list itself most of it is just Hanamaru cards apart from the heel the original stride fodder but only as a one one of and also the crit which is a four of as well as the old g guard which is a gr so that will probably be the most expensive card that you have to pick up but like i said this is going to be a pretty cheap deck and as we can see it's actually very strong so not very important for the english side of the game just yet but if these cards do come out in english i think it'll be pretty important and will definitely become a threat in our format as well especially because of that early game Anyway, don't forget to hit that bell button to stay notified of when I upload, as well as check out my social medias on Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram, as well as join the Discord server where you can talk to other people that enjoy my content as well, as well as talk to me. So that's going to be it for me today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.